We have a jam-packed show today. We're diving back in the week two lineups. We're back into the fantasy face-off. Somebody other than me gets to spin the wheel of shame. Make sure you like the video, leave a little comment, maybe some ideas for the wheel of shame, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, and the Deucers. Back for another spectacular episode, Friday, September 16th. More matchups. Week two of the fantasy football and NFL season is at hand. We have one game in the books. We will be talking about it. It was a fun one. It wasn't the high-scoring affair that I hoped for. It was sketchy. That it was it, it, the pass rushes for both teams caused significant issues for those big big plays down the field. I really don't like when great offenses have great defenses. <laughs> Let's get that out of here, okay? I want you know all these pass rushers uh, coming to the the AFC West. That's nonsense, okay? There's great quarterbacks there. Let let's protect them. That's a good word, Mister Moore. Thank you. I mean, we we still hit fifty plus points, right? I don't know. Yeah, 24 to 27. Okay. Well, that did. Ma uh, you did. Does out. the math check out? Math checks out. It kind of got there in the end. And uh, this is the week of, dare I say, market correction for a lot of fantasy football players in both directions. Players that had big week ones are going to come down to earth. Players that were invisible, Mike Williams, uh, are going to show what they have and why they were paid and why they do what they do. Mike Williams with the big game and big half. It was good to see. It was great to see. Uh, so, thankfully, it seems that Justin Herbert avoided serious injury. That was frightening for a lot of fantasy players. If you have Keenan or Mike Williams or Austin Eckler or obviously Herbert himself, if he, if he went down to major injury, that would be a problem. Yeah, I, th I think we're awaiting more information. The x-rays were negative, so he does not have broken ribs, but obviously he was hurt. I mean, he, yeah. he, there was the play where you know it was like third and two, and he could just walk to the first down, and he's like, I can't do yeah, this. Yeah, he he couldn't – and he could barely throw the ball away and looked like a completely broken man, and we're all in our slack. Like, take the guy out of – if if you can't pick that up, you're hurting your team. You need to get him out. And, of course, the next play, he the just – dot to DeAndre Carter. rips a dart down, down the field. You're like, oh – well, I guess he should be in. Like, it was it like he was went so conflicting. 50 yards down the field and handed him the ball. Yeah. It was the most perfectly thrown. <laughs> and then a fourth down touchdown to completely change the betting lines in that yeah. game to uh, Joshua Palmer. Yeah, which um, all the Joshua Palmer truthers, they <laughs> a sigh they, of yeah. relief because yep, they snuck in. did not have a good game and then uh, had, a, had a good game. It was fine, yeah. So um, – and then, well, if we're still yeah, let's just we're stay, already in the game. We can just stay in the game. That's fine. All right, Austin Eckler, how you? Yeah, okay. Jason has pushed the microphone away from his face. We were talking about him earlier in the week, and it was like Austin Eckler versus Saquon Barkley, and we talked about well, Eckler now has two other guys getting on the field, and it's not they didn't get a ton of work. Joshua Kelly had four carries. Sony had four carries, except. The goal line carries went to Sony Michelle, include like, and Sony Michelle had one where the first effort to break a tackle was extremely nice, and then it was the, some of the laziest goal line running I had ever seen. It looked like he would f for sure have an incredible play, break a tackle, and just walk right in, and then the defense smothers him, and he goes down. And you, if I'm a coach, you're out. You're you're not going back into this game. You're not getting another goal line carry. Uh, but that's not how they did it, and they went right back to him. The most upsetting uh, moment of this, and I, I drafted Austin Eckler. For the record, I did offer the trade before this game for Barkley. I, I went through was, with it. 
and it was not I, taken. I told you it would get turned um, down. So, uh, but so Sony Michelle, they got down. The, I think this was the first time they got to the goal line, and Sony Michelle was in. And I was like, "What?" And then, thank goodness, it was the end of the <laughs> quarter. So I'm like, "Okay, they uh, can make the personnel right, right, change," right. and. You know, they they got to walk to the other side of the field, so get Eckler in there, and then they walk all the way down to the other side of the field, and it is just, the new the next quarter starts, and Sony Michelle, what? Well, I, Austin Eckler had 20 red zone touchdowns last year. So if you go through two games, and he doesn't score, and he doesn't get red zone opportunities, there's going to be panic in the streets. Now, he had 10 targets. He was well, the leading receiver. He, yes, and uh, I mean... It was not great until there was some some garbage time there. Well, not garbage, not garbage time, time, but you know what? It was the two minute drill, and the the defense was saying, "Okay, go ahead, throw it to Austin Eckler. We don't care." And I so I think at was, least two of his receptions and like thirty yards came on that final drive. But yeah. you get that with Eckler. Yeah, yeah. Of I mean, course. that's the of course. beauty. Fourteen carries to four to uh, for each of the other guys. You do, but this was also without Keenan Allen, who probably would have been really involved in that stretch, and it. it it was also when Herbert was injured and those dump offs seemed a lot easier for him than, than to rifle something down the field. The, the, the big question for me, for me, for Austin Eckler that everyone I'm sure is wondering is, can he still be the top three guy, the top five guy, if he's not getting goal line work? And to me, it's no. Yeah. And I'm adjusting where I'm thinking about Austin Eckler. He's still fantastic. He's still a running back one, but for him to be, thought of as in the elite for fantasy football i i don't think that's going to happen this year unless they're unless they the coaches saw the 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 sony michelle efforts this week and make a complete adjustment next week i do think this team is well coached and i think that um they are super bowl contenders uh, and they do not want to overuse austin eckler I, they are clearly aware that Sony Michelle is not as good as Austin Eckler. Right. But at the same time, they want to keep him healthy for the season. They they want to have this guy when it matters even more later. So I I I think what we've seen is what's going to uh, stick. Mike Williams was eight for one thirteen and a touchdown. If you started Gerald Everett, you were very happy. He once again looked very good. <laughs> Ten targets, six for seventy one, and until the interception, he was. Uh, Oh, you're saying because he when he was tired. Yeah, if you didn't see the play, Gerald Everett had a a monster uh, catch, carrot, just dragging people. Unfortunately, did not get into the end zone. Then looks immediately to the sideline and says, "Please take me out of the game." And they're like, "No, no, go, go, go!" And Herbert's like, you're, "The ball's coming to you." And the guy couldn't move. And then there was a, a pick six that ended the game for them. All right, another good game for Everett, though. Yeah, yes, I mean, it, yes. it was great to see him involved. I think he was the main beneficiary of uh, not having Keenan Allen, so we'll see if Keenan Allen gets back next week. But regardless of, you know, Keenan Allen is there or is not there, Gerald Everett is a uh, part of this passing game. And at the tight end position where basically if you don't have one of the top guys, everyone else sucks, give me a major part of the yeah. Herbert mm -hmm. Chargers passing game. I think he might be the late-round tight end steal. And then on the Kansas City side, Clyde did have a good game. He was uh, it was big plays again. He only had uh, what twelve opportunities in this game. Twelve, 12, 12, 12 eight, touches, and and opportunities because he caught all his passes. So fifty two yard run that really helped him on the rushing side. It was great to see. And then he caught four passes. I I want to briefly say that Patrick Mahomes was telling the truth. Yeah, everything about this passing offense is not. Other than focusing on, on Travis Kelsey at times, everybody else is who's open, how does it you know, how does the play shake out? Nine players with targets, none over five in this game. Justin Watson with the touchdown. Juju was terrible. MBS, yes, it was seven targets, but these were not if you watched the game, the targets were not no. reasonably good targets. Literally two of them were throw away over the top targets. Mm -hmm. Another one was a he's getting sacked and just kind of chucks the ball in the middle of the field where there's three receivers and MBS was one of the closest ones. He's not a focal point of the offense. Neither is Juju. Neither is Hardman. Neither is Watson. Patrick will get his, but I don't I don't expect to have any confidence playing 
anybody but Travis Kelsey in the receiving game. I'm sorry. Agreed. No, you, I mean, so your for your process moving forward, are you like if you got MVS and Juju because the, when they were drafted in essentially every C league, are you? T. Okay, so you are cutting. You're not even going to bench and no, see what happens. No, You're because move on to a different player. Yeah, because there are better options. Like off the waiver wire this past week, I would rather take a shot on Curtis Samuel than either of those guys. I'd rather take a shot on Donovan Peoples Jones' 11 targets and maybe being the one in Cleveland uh, than I would either of those two guys. So fair. I mean, I I I want to see a player that's going to take over the offense. Sky Moore is legitimately the only one that could ever do that. Mm -hmm if he showed some skill level that was demanding a bigger focus in the offense the way Tyreek did, MBS is not going to demand that. Does this guy even have a target? No. He was yeah. really a special teams player in, in this one. And, you know, so that means the packages did not involve him. I'm He's he's on my roster right now in our main league, and I'm like, yeah, if you, Justin Jefferson didn't do what Justin Jefferson did a couple <laughs> years ago where he, he was irrelevant for two games, and right. then all of a sudden they're like, okay, now you're the starter? Because I agree. If he becomes – a starter, the other guys just don't have it. Yeah, and Isaiah Pacheco. Go ahead and uh, probably yeah. move on there. Uh, yep. Jarek McKinnon was, was more involved. Pacheco had one carry. Uh, goodbye. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Not to say it will stay this way. But through week one, week two now for some of these players, Pickens, Pacheco, Damian Pierce, at least to start the year, not making the preseason impression that they had made. Sure. The Pickens was, I mean, on the field a ton. I, 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 of those three, I would feel confident in him moving forward. Uh, all right. News. Zach Ertz upgraded to a full practice. I had said yesterday – that that was going to happen. The team had come out and said it. He's going to get more snaps. Rondell Moore didn't practice, won't play. J.K. Dobbins, a full participant in Thursday's practice. Okay. Jason said yesterday, you got to watch and see before you put him into your lineup. You that's, still hold to that, right? That's what I would do. 100%. His practice reports are irrelevant. It's wait until after his first game. I got some bad news, guys. Michael Pittman didn't practice on Thursday. The downgrade is not a good sign. Quad injury. It could be pity City? That was with an S. With an S? This was for you, Michael. We built this city. Let Yay! it power. Let there it we go. <laughs> Let it power. Yeah, with it's the trifecta. Everyone's in pity. Let it fuel you. Recover I don't know if you saw quad. that, but the uh, the drop had the producers in it, too. What? Really? We built this city. Uh, that's fine. Okay. All are welcome. Yeah. All are welcome. In the city. Yeah. But not this week, potentially. And if they don't have – like, no. I made the almost upset pick with Jacksonville. Had no idea Pittman was injured because I don't think he was. And it's going to be really hard on this offense to – you know, nobody else stepped up last week. You've got I, the awful tower. It's going to be – oh, It's just going to be Johnny Taylor. Taylor. Oh, stop it. Stop it. We built this city. I do oh, – I reject man. that. Oh, Jonathan Taylor is going to get 50 carries. He is, but but Kylan Granson, <laughs> yeah, yeah, may yeah, have yeah. an opportunity in this yeah. game. So if you need a dart throw at tight end, he had the targets. DeAndre Swift did not practice on Thursday. He is expected to play. He did. They said he's going to practice quote a little bit little, on Friday. Little bit practice. Is that enough for you to to be confident? If he's active, I'm going to play him because he's fantastic. He rolled his ankle in the second quarter, but the thing with ankles is a lot of times you, when you <laughs> the thing with ankles, yeah. yeah. Well, the, those injuries, those rascals. You can play through it. The the you know when you injure your ankle, and then afterwards when you rest, it swells up, becomes much more difficult. So, um, but I can't imagine having the stones to bench DeAndre Swift after what he showed week one. Yeah, I'd play him just with some. Uh, a little bit of fear and trepidation for sure. that you could get a limited Swift. He may be DeAndre, like, kind of fast. Uh, yeah. I don't know. No. George, I, you know, there was a joke there. I, no, just, didn't, was, I sure. just didn't find it. I was giving you the space, too. but I couldn't think of a word that was a little <laughs> bit slower than Swift. Can you help me? Uh, I mean, molasses came to mind. That's, but that's really like slow. slow. No, yeah. that's no, no, so slow. What I wasn't going for slow. I was okay. saying instead of Swift, it's DeAndre. Any suggestions, yeah. deucers? No, everyone, everyone's Nick? shaking their heads. No, no. see how there's nothing there? 
DeAndre Jog? Yeah, I mean, that's what I wanted to get into, <laughs> but it's not Jog, right? No, that no. doesn't work. This, uh, can we power, go back in time? Power walk. Eh. Yeah, it needs to be a singular word. All right, we'll, we'll work Work on that. it, Foot Clan. Yeah. Help me out. Uh, George Kidd, I'm going to get a ton of tweets <laughs> oh, with those words. What about DeAndre Quick? I said that. You did? Yeah. I don't listen Is to Swift you. Swift better, faster than Quick? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, DeAndre S Quick. I don't know. That still sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it does sound good. And that's Try to find play. something a, a degree lower than quick, Jason. Get on it. I'm quickly. working it. Uh, George Kittle didn't practice, not expected to play. Hashtag sad. Brisk. Uh, oh. Uh, DeAndre Brisk? Yeah, that yeah was, that's not that bad. Was, that's it. That I think that's Kyle. it. Oh, Kyle, you nailed it. All right. We did it, everybody. <laughs> Group effort. So, so that, if I had said that, I wouldn't oh, have gotten the... Uh, that would have been a home run. No, I, the, they would have they certainly applauded. <laughs> this is like... It's like clown radio today. <laughs> Al Lazard remained limited in Thursday's practice. Do you have, like, if he's active, Mike, is it a wait and see with Lazard? Because Preferably, okay. yes. Alvin Kamara did not practice. Come on, man. Nervous? Um, yeah, a little nervous. They, uh, I, I just talked about the injury to Mark Ingram and the fact that they brought in Latavius Murray. So you got to monitor. The, going back to Alan Lazard, though, if he is active, I th I think I would you play put him, him out there. Yeah, I, I would. The put, they needed him. He looked so necessary to this offense. The matchup is good. Um, maybe that's maybe that's foolish. I mean, obviously, it's always going to come down to who you have other options to start. But I'm not terrified to. He's put in him a out tier there. where I would be pivoting to watch and see, because you you have an ankle injury he's coming off of, so you do have that risk built in. And I guess at home against Chicago, you can feel better. Yeah, I'm saying I'm okay playing him, but if you are prepared for week two sure. and you're look like, oh, I feel confident in these yeah. guys, I would move. What if them. it was Brandon Ayuk? Would you start Brandon? No, I'd go no. Lazard. I'd rather, rather never do that because okay. the, the, the 49ers are playing in the rain every week. Yeah, we'll goodness get to that. gracious. Uh, T. Higgins returned to practice. This is great. Still in the concussion protocol, but a chance to be cleared. David and Joker returned to practice. He had missed uh, not to not due to injury. And then the Bucks wide receiver room, okay, which is a, a regular feature here. You ready? Oh, uh, yeah. Give it to me. Return to practice today. Mike Evans and Julio Jones after uh, DNPs on Thursday. That's nice. great. Russell Gage returned to practice on Thursday. Oh, Fournette great. returned to practice on Thursday. That's great. Sounds like a rest day on Wednesday. And then KJ Hamler did not practice. That's not as great. Uh, if you took a late round shot with him, it's time to move on to somebody else because – Injury plus lack of involvement means go find a better upside option. Oh, come on. <laughs> what happened? There's more news. What's wrong? Brian Dayball said Kadarius Tony's hamstring tightened up during yesterday's Yoo practice. Goodness gracious, that guy. Well, His, I guess I can go make a waiver wire yeah, transaction. Yeah, that's, that's almost <clears throat> – it's hard to, to paint the picture of involvement now. Uh, I, I, I do think later in the season – who gets healthy, he is the yeah. best wide receiver, but it's very difficult after him not being involved, only getting two touches last week. Yeah, this is If no he's good. currently injured, he's not going to get the involvement this week, then you're not going to play him until after he gets involvement. Yep. So I don't think he should be a roster clog, is my point. I, I, I'm going to look at the waivers and see if I can pick someone out that can help me now. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right. Our weekly giveaway to supporters of the show at jointhefoot.com, giving away a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com for trophies, belts, swag for your league. The winner, Riley May. Congratulations. Yes. You're, You're the real fantasy champ this week. Congratulations, Riley. Yeah. Go swag out over at fantasychamps.com. Quick break and into the forecast. All right, week two. Here we come. Lots to talk about. A lot of matchups that we still need to get through. Nine games remaining. Let's do it. Fantasy forecast. 
We covered the Jets, Browns, Commanders, Lions, Bucks, Saints, Panthers, Giants, Patriots, Steelers, and Colts, Jags on yesterday's show. Commanders. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot to get through here. Let's begin with the 1-0 and matchup of the week. Miami at Baltimore. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Baltimore minus 3.5. The over-under is 44.5. I've actually had a really hard time deciding in my mind who's yeah. going to win this football game. So I'd love to hear from you guys and specifically – what fantasy players are going to have opportunities for success? Yeah, I, I think this is a game that should hit the over. Uh, I mean, you have two solid teams. They've got good defenses here, but the offenses should win out. When you've got Lamar Jackson on one side and Tyreek Hill on the other, There's uh, it's, there's been known to be battles there. So I am pretty happy with most of the fantasy options. Um, I think that the Ravens will win this game. They're at home. I think they are top to bottom the better team. They have the more experienced coach, but it should be should be pretty exciting. So for the Ravens, I mean, of course, Lamar and Mark Andrews, Mandrews, they are in. You've said that we that you would bench J.K. Dobbins. I agree with that. I'm going to wait and see. <laughs> Which, if Dobbins is active, then I'm definitely not playing Kenny Drake. Are you playing any of the pass catchers? Rashad Bateman had the huge uh, 55-yard touchdown. Uh, Duvernay had multiple touchdowns, but no one, none of the wide receivers seemed like they were go-to guys. Like This was not Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown, where you know the targets are going to those two players. So do you have any confidence in any of the wideouts? Uh, I do have confidence in Bateman. I think that uh, Bateman is a fine play. He's not someone that you have to play over everyone. But, you know, the two touchdowns to Devin Duvernay were, were bomb touchdowns that ended drives. So there wasn't, you know, as, as much opportunity there for Bateman. And Bateman actually had another bomb touchdown opportunity that was a near miss. So he could have been the Devin Duvernay two-touchdown uh, deep target guy. He's just clearly the best wide receiver, and that's what it comes down to. It's not that he had some great target share. It's that of the wide receiver core, and they're going to have to throw the ball, Bateman is the best wide receiver there, and it's not close. I think it's close. Yeah. Between him and Yeah, Duvernay. I don't think that there's anything definitive to make that claim. Uh, time will time will tell. But, I, I mean, Devin Duvernay's had a long career of doing not much. Uh, Same with Bateman. Bateman not a long short, career. short career of yeah. not doing much. I mean, Sorry, Bateman was a rookie career. last year who was injured the first half of the year. I just then, didn't see anything on the field that made me think Bateman was better than Duvernay. You're just saying in last the yeah, one game? in the one game. Okay. Yeah, that's, a, that's the only sample we have this so year. So are you playing Bateman or Duvernay? No. You going to chase anything? Okay. No, no, no. I, I'm going to watch both those guys. I mean, I, I guess I'm okay playing, playing them if you don't have better options. I'd probably go with Lamar at home over a shot on Traylon Burks or – or a uh, you know a an MVS type of start where you're just dart throwing or chasing. I don't think chasing the two touchdowns for Duvernay is something I want to do. All right, but what was Bateman's total outside of that touchdown? What was that, his that touchdown? What was, was his like target situation? Five targets, yeah, two receptions. Five targets in the game. It was like I said, it wasn't the great target share uh, or anything like that. But I mean, I think it's a little disingenuous to ignore like Bateman was a phenomenal collegiate first, prospect who first was a rounder. first round draft pick by them. It's like he is a good wide receiver. He ran 25 routes compared to Duvernay's 18 and Demarcus Robinson's 17. Yeah. I might, my jury's still out on what he'll become. That's all I'm saying. Sure. Yeah. I'd like to see him demand more targets than five and catch more than two. Me too. Uh, yeah, you got him on no, that roster over I there. Do. On the Miami side, Chase Edmonds, 16 opportunities, didn't do a ton with them. It will be kind of interesting to watch how that uh, – what materializes? What kind of success do we see from Edmonds? The problem with Edmonds his entire career has been that he's very valuable for the team, catches a lot of passes between the 20s, but it's harder to rely on him uh, around the goal line. We saw no efficiency from him or Raheem Mostert in week one, and – Going on the road here, it will be kind of interesting to see what happens. Mostert got all the red zone opportunities in week one, so that's something I'm a little worried about. Yeah, I mean, the pass catching, if you're in a PPR league, at least a half PPR league, I think Chase Edmonds is a fine flex play because of his utilization in the passing game, but uh, the goal line is going to be really telling going forward. Tyreek Hill, he's in there. Jalen Waddle, how'd you feel after week one? 
good enough. He's very fast. Yeah, Better than is. both of the Bateman Duvernay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Atlanta, 0-1, taking on the 0-1 Los Angeles Rams. These two uh, teams, same record, same team. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a 10.5-point line. Uh, yeah, DraftKings Sportsbook, 10.5. In favor of the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, they are at home. I don't think that the Falcons will have quite the same – uh, start to the week this week that they did last week. So, according to one of our great writers, Matt DeSorbo, he pointed this out in an article. Since 2000, teams favored by 10 or more points win 85% of the time. We're expecting a positive game script and a bounce back performance from the Rams. Uh, they have three extra days of rest after their NFL, you know, game one debut on Thursday night. Stafford at home. Henderson should see a ton of touches. I actually think Akers will get onto the field a lot more in this game because they may work out some of the, I don't know, they just work out some of his issues later in the game. Yeah, if if you want to get him more involved, it's a lot easier to do. A lot easier to do if you're up, you know, by 17 points than when you're down and struggling against the the you know, Buffalo Bills. He's still a bench for me. Oh, absolutely okay. a bench. But I do think, I agree with Andy, he'll have a few more carries, take away a little bit from uh, Darnell Anderson. But Darnell Anderson, <laughs> a.k.a. Daryl Henderson, is a great start this week. Allen Robinson in week one played 97% of snaps, 96% of routes run, had just two targets. Are you willing to play him this week yes. at home? That's a yes from Mike. Yes. I'm abstaining. <laughs> Not really. I'm playing him actually in multiple leagues. But Jason, no, I, I definitely think you should start him. The pass rush isn't uh, going to be what they dealt with last week. And you know when when guys are smashing your face, you go to your best friend as fast as you can. You know Stafford <laughs> had no that's true no time to look through his progression, and his progression starts with Cooper Cup. That is what they say. Mariota and company, Patterson. Drake London, Kyle Pitts would be the three start considerations. Patterson uh, or my name is Jeff against Seattle. Ooh, that is, oh man. I'm going to go with Patterson because we've seen over the last year in a game an explosive athlete. Whereas against the Rams. I mean, it's one of those things where his involvement can be in the passing game. It can be uh, on the ground and. Too yeah, hard I mean, to bench after an RB4 finish? Uh, after an RB4 finish and after the season he had last year. So I, I think Cordero is probably in most people's lineups if you have him. It's it's a very difficult decision. I think I'll go I think I'd go Patterson, but that is that's scary. At least Damian Williams, the backup, did not practice on Thursday. We know he left the game with the 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 rib and it sounds like he's got a hip issue going on. Tyler Algier, the rookie, you would expect him to be suited up for this game. Does that mean he gets on the field? I mean, that's – I think it's a, a, a harder road for him to impact Patterson than Damian Williams in his – in what it will be Algiers' first game. So it, I think he can feel confident in the workload, but a running back against the Rams is uh, – that's not really where I want to be. Also, I want to bring up Marcus Mariota. This isn't the week to play him, but he looked good. Yeah, I he thought did. he was a competent uh, quarterback and – more importantly, he ran the ball a ton. He had eight designed runs. Okay, these aren't just scrambles and, like, you're not able to rely on it. That's part of the game plan here for them. So going forward as a streaming option, if you're in two quarterback leagues, I think it's probably a bad uh, game this week. Maybe you trade for him in a two-quarterback league for brighter days down the road. All right, and then Drake London? I would sit him this week, but I'm super excited for him. All right, Seattle at 1-0. and Also play Kyle Pitts. Yeah, and well, we didn't we didn't mention people are going to ask like do I play Kyle Pitts? Yes, of course you play Kyle Pitts. It's like Mike Williams. These are, these are top tier players. They're going to have crap games. Just, Everybody does. You just go. That sucks. That it, it really really sucks when they have a bad game, especially week one. But you play Kyle Pitts. Yeah, if you had to like map out the emotional impact of weeks over the course of the year, <laughs> I genuinely think week one has a greater emotional impact than even the three playoff weeks. It's it's an up. It's like an upside-down bell curve. Yeah. Seattle, 1-0, taking on the 49ers. 
in San Francisco. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus 8.5. The over-under is 41. That gives San Francisco a uh, almost 25 points. Seattle just 16. The 49ers defense in week one, uh, it didn't give up a lot of fantasy points. It was the slosh game up in Chicago. They lost, but the the production, like there wasn't anybody on the Chicago side that you would have been happy playing. So I just don't expect a lot out of Geno Smith and company going on the road. Heavy favorite 49er team. The way that Seattle, again, the way that they win this football game is Trey Lance turns the ball over three times, right? Mm -hmm. A fumble and two picks. Mm -hmm. Something like that would make this game competitive. We haven't, we, we know it's going to be rainy, mostly in the first half. And, you know, Trey Lance is going to be put to the test again. The defense for Seattle looked okay last week. In wet conditions, with a team like the 49ers who already want to run the ball, with a new quarterback who is a mobile running quarterback, I, the San Francisco 49ers are going to throw the ball three times. That's what it feels like. They're, they're going to run the ball a ton, which means that there's not going to be as much time in the game, as many plays played in the game, the clock is always going to be running. And so on the Seattle Seahawks side, man, I don't love starting any of them. Like I, Yeah, you know, I think he, you're right. I think Penny is the only one that I'm comfortable with because they have that same – they're going to have the same philosophy, and he had success in week one, where this game may be won on the ground and both teams commit to that run. But you, we do have Kenneth Walker – second round rookie running back for the Seattle Seahawks th they said he's going to play and I'm not I'm not saying he's going to overtake Rashad Penny but if he if you work him in and he and Walker gets out of eight carries I mean that's a that's a pretty big deal for Rashad Penny in a negative game script and Penny already doesn't catch passes at least what so you're more from, worried about I'm, him. I'm 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 concerned about it yeah uh Jeff Wilson will get the start for San Francisco Jordan Mason and Ty Davis Price will have opportunities to establish uh, the hierarchy in the backfield for the 49ers, which could have an impact. the The biggest uh, thing I'll be watching is how successful is Jeff Wilson on that first and second down opportunity, because if there's a big difference between some of these rookies and him, you've got enough weeks before Elijah Mitchell's back to where you could see some transitions happen. Sure. You want to add – Mike last week added Jeff Wilson on Sunday morning. If you add a Jordan Mason or a Ty Davis Price on Sunday morning, and you probably will know which one to choose maybe with some news before then, you could have the same benefit. Jeff Wilson has been injured a ton yeah. in San Francisco, and so just don't ignore those players. No, I, th I think they're absolutely worth the – worth, worth the stash to find out. Uh, Jeff Wilson, though, last year when he saw at least – I'm going to double-check the stat, but I believe it's when he saw at least 60% of the snaps. Yeah, so if, when, when he saw over 60% of the snaps, he was a top-20 running back. So he's – because, that, of course, San Francisco just produces at the running back position. And the running back that you really want here is Debo Samuel, who's going to be <laughs> so involved. He, he, Debo's going to be – I mean, obviously you're playing him if you've got him already, but like in a DFS lineup, I think he will be – you know six carries plus in this game it's Debo and no one else in the pass catching department for San Francisco for in, now, in yeah. my opinion and so looking at Trey Lance a lot of people want to ask questions about Trey Lance after week one we had a foot cast question yesterday saying you know is Justin Fields the guy we actually should have been looking at instead of Trey Lance 54 rushing yards in week one tough game to be a part of in terms of the weather but Lance or Brady Lance or Carr, Lance or Cousins. This week I'm probably it, playing the other guys yeah, because was, of the because of the situation and the like. The we won't know until of course Sunday, but as of right now, the weather peeps out there are saying it's going to be not just a light rain. It's going to be a rainy game, which will be enough to affect the uh, the the fantasy output for Trey Lance. Which means so next week Trey Lance goes to Denver, so it, it will be a blizzard. This game's going to be closer again, just so you know. It could be. Seattle's going to make this a game. The I will say for Seattle. And I hate Seattle. Just to yes. be clear, we're Cardinal fans. So when I like went with Seattle last week, that wasn't a bias. I would like to see them lose a lot of games. The 
they didn't like if you look at just the box score, the Broncos really didn't do anything in the second half. Neither offense did. But Jamal Adams, uh, safety for the Seattle Seahawks, he's done. He's toast. He's out for the year. And the the Broncos did move the ball much better in the second half. It came down to two goal line fumbles is the reason they didn't put up any points. So the 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 dominant Seattle defense in the first half, they were not the same after the injury. Cincinnati, man, what a, what a tough start to the year on paper for Seattle, having to go to Denver, right? Oh, no, that no, game was at, at home. home. Sorry, home. yeah. Uh, Cincinnati, 0-1 taking on the 0-1 Dallas Cowboys. Draft King Sportsbook line here, Cincinnati minus 7. The over-under is 42. Cooper Rush is going to get the start. What can we expect from Zeke and CD Lamb and Dalton Schultz? Dalton Schultz six for seventy or sorry, six for sixty let me try that again. Seven for sixty two. There it is. On nine targets in week one. The Muth tore up the Cincinnati defense last week. And Dalton Schultz could be a good friend to Cooper Rush, right? Yes, absolutely. He he absolutely could. We don't have, you know, a ton of uh Cooper Rush statistics to lean on, but he did have a start uh, last year against Minnesota. He was the he was the QB twelve, had three hundred passing yards, uh, it had two passing touchdowns. But the Vikings were atrocious last year, so it's it's hard to really glean information from from that game. The I was looking at the numbers. They uh, in week one the Cowboys passed. I was like seventy. 70% of the time, it was a low 70s, mid 70s. And on the season last year, it was right around 60%. So I think Zeke is going to see a lot more work. I was going to ask you for Zeke. On the ground. 10, or sorry, 15 attempts over under for Zeke. Ooh, 15. I'm going to take the under because I expect them to be losing early and and often. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, I mean, the, the Cincinnati Bengals defense is fantastic. We've talked at nauseum about the uh injuries to the offensive line and it's not just injuries free agent losses I mean their offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys is uh really weak right now so I mean it, it's tough because you're, you're going to want to protect Cooper Rush and the best friend there is going to be Zeke in the run game I think that's what they are going to try and what they want to do is establish it with Zeke I just don't know how long you're going to be able to do that if the Bengals are able to score, because I do think that the Bengals will be able to shut down the Dallas offense. Joe Burrow, seems like you can put him out there with uh, maybe some bounce back confidence. The four picks marred last week. They should have won four? the football game. Yeah, it was what? against Pittsburgh. And um, Joe Mixon had 36 opportunities last week. Yeah, he's... You know, it's going to be great. What's crazy, and maybe, Kyle, you can vet this. I, I, I saw this somewhere. So, Joe Mix was super involved in the pass again, which was awesome. It was what you wanted to see. But I believe it all came on first and second down. Like, that just so happened to be, you know, it wasn't like he was the pass catching back in utilization in passing situations. Um, it was just they they dumped it off to him more. So, I that's one of the things I'm watching the most this week is the receiving the targets to, to Joe Mixon because it was awesome week one. And in week one, when Dallas played Tampa Bay, uh, Leonard Fournette ran for 127 yards against Dallas. What? What? So you're looking at the dumps for Joe Mixon, and you're looking at those opportunities to, you know, if Leonard Fournette can go off for 127, uh, Mixon should really have success against this Dallas defense. And a reminder, if T. Higgins plays, you play T. Higgins. Yes. Jamar Chase Five end zone targets last week. Yeah, I, I end zone, not few, just red zone. He was a few inches away from like three touchdowns. It's crazy per he was, quarter. He was one uh, one uncalled review. Yes, he was away. a red flag away from a <laughs> touchdown because he scored a touchdown. No, uh, I mean Jamar Chase is always a, a an unstoppable force. The Houston Texans at zero zero and what, one. Uh, sorry, CD Lamb. <laughs> you thought we could go without talking about No, this. yeah, we're here for the tough questions. Lamb C or DJ Moore? I'm going to go Lamb. Right. Allen Robinson or DJ or uh, CD Lamb? That one, uh, oh. I'm going to play Allen Robinson. Go yeah, on. I'm going Allen Robinson in that. I'm um, play CD Lamb. I think I'm going DJ Moore over CD Lamb as well. Bateman uh, or CD Lamb? CD Lamb. I'm going to take CD there. Yeah, okay. 
<laughs> Michael Gallup has been ruled out of this game. The Texans at 0-0-1 take on the Broncos, who are 0-1. Another, there are some real heavy favorites this week. Yeah. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Denver at home, Denver minus 10. The over-under is 46. This is not one I'm going to go out and think that I think Denver wins this game by two touchdowns. So uh, I wasn't in on them last week. I think they're going to bounce back in a huge way. They had the mistakes on the goal line. They did move the football. Russ still went over 300 yards. And uh, unfortunately for me, as I am facing him this week, Russ is going to cook at home, uh, you know, 42 pass attempts last week. He's not a takeout guy. He's a home cooking. Oh, fella. okay. DiGiorno's type yeah. of oh, quarterback. Yeah, because yeah, it's not <laughs> delivery. It. Uh, do you guys disagree? I mean, is Russ no, a strong no, start no, this week? I, I agree. Yeah, Russ is a strong start. It's a good, easy matchup. But I do think that um, this will be a running game in the in the end. The ten point home favorites are going to go to the running back, and while that might seem like oh, Javante Williams smash game, Javante Williams was clearly established as kind of the pass catching back. They came out and talked about that as well. So I, I actually think Melvin Gordon is a great yep. play this week and could be the stronger fan like I wouldn't start him over Javante by any means but it won't could be end so up that way absolutely could end up that way yeah it's a good point especially if this game's out of hand and they give him the ball a lot in the second half he looked good I mean both players were able to run the football last week uh Melvin had I think 12 carries I think he had Melvin 12. had 12 carries for 58 yards yeah I mean still Melvin Gordon it seems Cortland Sutton Jerry Judy are both of them in your lineup yes mm-hmm are you messing around with any of these Broncos tight ends? Salbert Aguabanom getting a look this week, or are you just going to try to find somebody more? Jason's shaking his head no. No, I, 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 I'm not. Not in this matchup where I don't think they're going to throw as much as they could in a, in a more competitive divisional game. The Broncos' defense last week, number one against wideouts in terms of fantasy points given up, number two against running backs. They lost Rex Burkhead, Damian Pierce. <laughs> Rex Burkhead, Damian Pierce, what do you do? Uh, I I bench both of them. I'm not excited. I think Damian Pierce will get more involved. The coaching staff talked about having him be more involved. Rex Burkhead certainly – I mean, you can't possibly start Damian Pierce. He was the clear and utter backup. Agreed. You have to see something first. So the question is, can you start Rex Burkhead, who had so much utilization that usually that utilization means – yeah, you could start him, plus he was the passing guy, and when you're down 10, that could work out. But no, I, I think this is a really good defense uh, making their home opener. I'm not starting Rex Burkett or Damian Pierce. Uh, last week, even though he did not finish in the top 24, Brandon Cooks was fine. He was 7 for 82, didn't score, had 12 targets. and It's a great play. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The, the game script says Brandon Cooks will be targeted 10 plus times again. Every game is a great game for Brandon Cooks. To, and obviously, to be you're, you're chasing uh, O.J. Howard's two touchdowns. Oh, I mean, two touchdowns, baby. No. Okay. Moving on, the Arizona Cardinals at 0 1 travel to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders, who are also 0 1. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Las Vegas minus 5.5 at home. The over, one, the over under is a nice 51.5 points. Las Vegas was number one in neutral pass rate after week one. That's lovely. That's yes. the Devontae Adams factor. Arizona number one in no huddle rate since Cliff has come to town. That's great. Now I don't want to presume of this matchup the way we have we've maybe tried should, to do maybe that. They should try to huddle more. But they but Cliff doesn't have anything to say. Oh, they be it'd be in the huddle and just be like dead air on the on, on the helmet. Just be stock tips or something. Cliff, you there, buddy? You guys are brutal. <laughs> you guys are so brutal. He sucks. Well, yeah, I mean, I had to watch that game, and it was brutal. Um, it was offensive. Can we blame Kyler for that? Because he didn't, little little bit, he didn't look great. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I, you know, I was on the radar this morning talking about how Kyler is a big concern because early coming into draft season, it looked like he might be the next guy up behind Josh Allen. He's in that conversation. Now, you got uh, he's you got Mahomes and Herbert and Lamar and Hurts all clearly ahead like I would rather start all of those guys over a Kyler and Kyler's gonna be fine for as, fantasy. A, as a fantasy yes for, for for fantasy purposes um Kyler's gonna be f fine because he runs would you but, play Burrow or Kyler here against the Raiders defense because I think I still lean Kyler there I lean Kyler because of the rushing and because of the pace of play there should be a lot of actual plays 
in this game. I mean, that's something you look for for fantasy. That Not every game has the same amount of snaps. And hopefully Kyler is true to his word of when he gave the comments of, I need to target Hollywood Brown 10 plus times because they they would have much more success on offense if they could figure out how to get Hollywood Brown, their best wide receiver, by a uh, by an infinite amount right now. If they can get him 10 targets, they will move the ball more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I actually think James Conner is still somebody that I am keeping my eye on in terms of acquiring. Oh, sure. I wasn't sure where you were going. And I, I thought you were worried, and I, James Conner is – I completely agree with you. His utilization was phenomenal. The end of that game gets weird, and so you saw more Eno Benjamin, and rightly so. Like, don't get James Conner injured. But uh, he looked like the workhorse back that he was when Chase Edmonds was missing last season, so certainly target him. I do think Zach Ertz will get some work in this game. And so he'll be back on the field for more snaps. I think he's sneaky. If you need somebody at the tight end position, I'd be playing him over in 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 Joku tier. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys agree with that. No, I, I do. do. I do. What about the Dorch? Uh, the Dorch is interesting. The, this being Greg Dorch. Um, what do you think of this, Mike? The human Dorch. Okay. Okay. That comes from a Foot Clan. Uh, That's not listener bad. Yesterday. That's not bad. We weren't sure. Yeah. Jason really likes hitting the Dorch. Yeah, you yeah. know, really loudly, yeah. and and so the what human a dorch. Yeah, the human I like dorch takes more. it away. Yeah, the, it does, and it makes him sound like real. But awesome. he's a, that's a more hero. Yeah, yeah it's as a opposed to a very negative <laughs> way that Jason's saying it. Right, and and I think that the dorch is okay, but he's not. You know, he's not lighting. He's not the on human fire dorch. while he flies. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but the the reality for Greg Dorch is uh, the drumbeat was good through. Preseason and training camp, he was involved, but Zach Ertz being more involved makes me less likely to look Dorch's way. And then Jason has Derek Carr as his start of the week from yesterday's show. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you guys watch Patrick Mahomes <laughs> last night with a real defense? It was like, oh, this, it's, yeah. it's not as easy as it looked week one against the Cardinals. Yeah. Derek Carr. Yeah. Congratulations. Yep. Two and a half touchdowns for Derek Carr. They, that, that's exactly what he's going to have. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go over. How do you pull off the half touchdown? You The ball gets cut in half midair. Yeah, it's never been that's done. That's probably the last answer I expected, Mike. <laughs> it's the only way. It's a real dumb answer. Um, yeah, I, I do think uh, I'll, I'll take the over on two and a half. He uh, did not hit three one time last year. He did not have Devontae Adams one time last year. So I think Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, we saw Travis Kelsey destroy uh, the Cardinals last week, although last year they were really good against tight ends. And quarterbacks. Arizona 10th against quarterbacks, second against tight ends last year. Linebackers should be a strength, like the only one on defense. So it was really surprising to see uh, how good Kelsey was last week. But there's no one, no one that can guard Devontae Adams on the Cardinals roster. All right, so play him then, huh? Oh, yeah. Devontae Adams, you're, you're starting him? Yeah, yep. I mean – uh, he, he'll have 101 Jesus. guaranteed. Wait, the 49% target share, is that accurate? 49%? Yes. yes. Come on. Derek Carr, what are you doing? He's doing what every fantasy player has <laughs> always dreamed of doing. They ask their quarterbacks. That you, you would always, it's what, it's what uh, Aaron Rodgers did in the playoffs. It uh, was like, if I, can, if I throw it to this person, I always succeed. Should I do that again? No. It's we've, just wild. We've had those conversations yeah. ab about, like, if I was a quarterback and I had one of these unstoppable guys, why don't you just throw it to him every play? Yeah, Matthew Stafford was listening, too. Yeah. All right, Sunday Night Football, the Bears at 1-0 take on the Packers at 0-1. DraftKings Sportsbook line, another big one here. Nine-and-a-half point home favorites, the Packers. The over-under is 41. The Bears are at that 16-point mark. I, I don't know if I – man. I'm trying to think of what to do with my bears. All right. I don't think that Justin Fields is going to go on the road and have success. I, I think he's going to turn the ball over to nullify anything he does on the ground. That's awesome. just my opinion. I think he may run the ball a little bit, but I think he's going to get nullified by turnovers. I think he'll finish. I don't, I'm, I don't know about a QB one, but like that 
high end QB two. Let's just I, why I think he's in streaming contention. But then Montgomery, twenty one opportunities last week. I think you play him, but you have lowered expectations against Green Bay. And then Mooney and Komet are just. I just don't like the situation for the Chicago this week. 16 total points projected in Lambeau. The Packers coming off uh, what I think is an embarrassing a loss. Whooping? Yeah, they, they were embarrassed. They're going home. They've got a chip on their shoulder. Um, Aaron Rodgers owns the Bears, historically speaking. But did you see? Uh, did you see Justin Fields do the the slip and slide? It was that was awesome. I mean, you tell me that guy's not. That guy's awesome. Not, not having a good time. Swag. No, I, honestly, the I'm I'm not. He quite, celebrated like he hadn't won a game before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm quite, not quite with close. Andy on the sense that I think Justin Fields is an okay fantasy option. I think he's going to run a ton. I'm scared of the weapons Mooney commit in this matchup, but uh, you know it's one of those things where when they have a bad game, after having hor horrible week ones. The managers who have had to deal with that are not going to be able to stay in it, but they should. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, the the place that I have places I have Komet, I'm playing him, and the places I have Mooney, I'm playing him. Aaron Rodgers is a an interesting question this week. Yes. He struggled in week one, but I do expect him to bounce back in part by throwing the ball to Aaron Jones, my start of the week. He's averaged 88 yards and six touchdowns in four games against Chicago, speaking of Aaron Jones. And then getting back Alan Lazard, having a healthier Robert Tunyon, getting on the same page with some of these other weapons, I think Aaron Rodgers is a strong play this week. Okay. Do you disagree? I I don't – everything is there that Aaron – the Aaron Rodgers we know should come out in this game and throw – The MVP. It would be the MVP, throw for 250 and three touchdowns, a, a normal Aaron Rodgers line. But if, like, if Alan Lazard is – still if he if he's out or if he's playing and he's like I don't know still you know 65% or so because he had an ankle problem I I am concerned about the other weapons for Green Bay being able to get it done. Yeah, it comes down to Lazard for me. If Lazard is in, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to have an Aaron Rodgers game. Uh, if he's out, these these veterans, uh, you know, Cobb and Watkins, they just don't have it. I think he'll get it done regardless okay. in this one. Monday night doubleheader. The games are overlapping. Why are you doing that to us, NFL? Dumb. What are you doing? They're like, what's the thought process here? I have no idea. Like This must be money. This must be like. Well, season opener is usually you get the head-to-head, -head, or not the head, I'm sorry, the back-to-back -back games on Monday night football, and it's great. And they're like, no, we'll go week two, and how about we, we like have them playing at the same time? So you can't watch both. Tennessee at 0-1-1 taking on the 1-0 Buffalo Bills. Another big line here. DraftKings Sportsbook has it at Buffalo minus 9.5. Over-under is 48. Josh Allen locked yes. into your lineup. Diggs and Gabe Davis yes. locked into your lineup. Question marks around the very limited work of Devin Singletary. He was so efficient. Just didn't get a lot. And then Dawson Knox, entirely uninvolved, and yet... He had to block. I was going to say... I was going to say he is not going to have quite the um, situation he had in week one on a blocking scheme, yep. you know, plan. But what do you think about Knox? I, I'm putting him back in there. I mean, if you're like Albert Ogwebenam, that tier, you know, David Njoku, Dawson, there's no way I'm going to those guys over Dawson Knox. Cole Komet or Dawson Knox, I think, is a – that's a tougher one. Uh, wow. But Knox, in between those two players, has I would give the edge, the touchdown edge, at like seventy plus percent yeah. to Knox. Yeah, I I don't think that you go just based on one week. Uh, we we've seen Knox be a touchdown machine, so I'm fine starting Knox this I've week. I've seen Isaiah McKenzie hit waiver wires. That's f and it, the, he if he got the full Cole Beasley treatment of being just the only slot guy, then he would have been great. But him and is there Crowder. a chance he gets that though? I mean, it's one week and he was coming off an injury. Uh, I, it's you possible. Know, it, it's possible, but it it worked well, and I think it keeps two smaller players healthy. So the sixty forty split that we saw in the slot work, if that continues, it's really hard to rely on either player. Ask me, McKenzie or MVS moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ask me anybody or MVS moving forward, and I'd love to get out some of my frustration. Uh, Derrick Henry, it's yeah. going to be tough. 
on the road in Buffalo, but he's Derrick Henry, so he's in your lineup. Otherwise, I'm not touching another Tennessee Titan. That This game is simple. No, nope, yeah. it's, it's a sit and watch, Traylon Burks. It was great to see the involvement he had. He's going to be good. I believe he's going to be good, and he will be the number one for this team by the end of the year. But it might take it might take a month. It might take two months. And Kyle Phillips, the tar, the the other rookie, targets per route king of the week. You know, forty three percent of his his routes he got a target, which is just absolute nonsense. I'm not playing him against Buffalo, but I'm I'm willing to have him on the bench and and see what happens. Because if if he does another monster target per route run performance, then I would be I'm okay playing him the following. Yeah, the I Bills think he's are so good. I was gonna say I think he's actually gonna get a lot of targets. They might not be valuable, but the pass rush for Buffalo is going to cause some issues. Um, Minnesota at one and zero taking on the one and zero Eagles on Monday night as well. DraftKings Sportsbook line is uh, what do we have here for the line? I actually don't have it in here. Uh, it's minus two. Over under is fifty and a half. So Philadelphia got through Week One. Jalen Hurts had ninety rushing yards, no passing touchdowns. Don't Welcome need to Jalen Hurts. Yeah, don't need him. Don't care. <laughs> A.J. Brown, 155 receiving yards in his Eagles debut, the fifth most by any player in his first game with a new team all time, feeling very like Diggs' first season yep. in Buffalo. And that's exactly what they hoped for when they got him. They wanted to unlock Jalen Hurts and allow him to level up as a passer. I mean, Jalen Hurts is an auto start. A.J. Brown is an auto start. The other questions here on the Eagles' side is – are you able to start Devontae Smith? Nope. Are you able to start Miles Sanders? Uh, with yes. With uh, yeah. I mean, it's a flex. Sanders, That's a flex. Okay. So the the previous game, two Monday night guys, Miles Sanders or Devin Singletary. Sanders. Uh, I'm gonna go with the heavier favorites. I'm gonna go with Buffalo and Devin Singletary on that. Miles Sanders did get into the end zone last week, but he hasn't done it a lot, and I think Singletary will this week. That's fair. Is Devontae Smith? Happy that A.J. Brown's on his team? Yes. Devontae Smith wants to win football games, yeah. not be a great fantasy football asset. No, I, 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 fantasy football at the window. Zero receptions, though. Well, he had four targets, and he had an egregious drop. So he, he zero receptions. It wasn't like he was completely uninvolved. That was kind of on him. Just so, so, like, it, I mean. Yeah. I don't know. Just Yeah, you know, Mike. Just, it's a human question of, like, we go three weeks in, and A.J. Brown is 120-plus yards every week, and you're getting three to four targets, and you were supposed to be the guy. Are you really happy? Were you, though? Devontae Smith? Yeah, was, was he supposed, supposed to be, to be the, the guy? guy? Absolutely. When the you... Heisman winner drafted in the first round? Yeah. Well, what do you mean the guy? Like the centerpiece of your offense? Yes. yes. When you're drafted in the first round, you better be drafted to be a centerpiece. Okay. I mean, when was T. Higgins drafted? Second round. Okay. Uh, Justin Jefferson, you should probably play him. Adam Thielen, any confidence of a bounce back performance yes. here? Yes. No. Okay, that's a split. So, tie um, break. Why don't you guys bet on something then? Uh, I, okay. I don't know where to set the line. Five receptions or four and a half receptions over well, under. I'll take under. the over. Perfect. Put it on the board. Water bet. Excellent. That was that was really quick and easy. He Thank played a hundred percent of the snaps uh, when there was a drop back and two wide receiver sets. Adam Thielen is going to be involved. That Kirk Cousins and the Vikings had no choice but to throw the ball to Justin Jefferson because that's what the Packers wanted them to do, apparently. No, based because on their... Justin Jefferson is fantastic and always open, and he's fantastic in this matchup, he and was he'll be open. He was fantastic last year, and Thielen was still part of it. The Eagles uh, against the Lions last week, they gave up the most fancy points to the running back position in football. Dalvin Cook is a, uh, a smash play here, and yes. then even the wide receiver position, the Eagles gave up a ton to the options in Detroit. So Thielen will have a shot it's just whether jefferson is as greedy as he was last week and then yeah kirk cousins two and nine on monday night football games you playing kirk cousins or trey lance kirk cousins yep okay. going kirk cousins uh he's had some big games even in losses um irv smith is not someone that you could play right now no nope. but he is someone that you need to keep an eye on to see they they planned for him to not be very involved last week and see if the plan is to get him more involved or not yep you got to pay attention to it Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. 
Oh, it's quickly becoming everybody's favorite segment because, uh, well, it's ridiculous. Andy versus Jason versus Mike. Every week on DraftKings, the fantasy face-off, the loser spins the wheel of shame. And, um, oh, well, <laughs> week one in the books. Uh, if, if you didn't hear the story from week one, it was the closest we've ever, ever had. I mean, it was two points separating last place from first place, and it came down to the last of the last plays. I needed a two-point conversion from Saquon Barkley. I got it. So, Mike, you were – all three of our lineups were great, but you were last. Yeah, mine was not great enough. Uh, also, um, I was the winner. You're the loser. Wheel of Shame. You lucky man, you get a spin it, Mike. Uh, spin the wheel. All right. The anticipation builds. It's clicking. We got, I saw a hippo, uh, cyberpunk. We got a horse face. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so I, I know. Not what very this, neighborly of us, I Jason. I know what this will be. <laughs> yeah. Give me the. I think it's going to be a horse face. <laughs> That's, if I had to guess. <laughs> I am a little worried whether Mike can get the horse face on. Oh, nope. Not worried anymore. Oh, mercy. Oh, uh, you look stupid, loser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Man. That looks a lot like fish face. From yeah. Last year. It yeah. smells a lot like fish face. Okay. Well, Mike, you sound great for the podcast. We are into. <laughs> it looks see. awesome. Oh, he can't see. <laughs> Have you sent your lineup to anybody? Nope. Okay, do you do you know it by heart? No, I I think I can see through a nostril. So <laughs> all right, we'll figure this out. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Oh, Mike, this it's is ridiculous. You and that's because you had such a bad lineup. You Mike. gave me the horse face when I lost on a two point conversion. I know, I know. I don't know how many times I'm going to have this choice, Mike. I had to to dive in. All right, let's go into our lineups for this upcoming week. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, there's flies all around your head. Uh, I'm going to go with Kyler Murray at the quarterback position. Uh, 7,500 going with Kyler against the Raiders. So Why were you so sad? I'm so sad because I went – my scariest position is the quarterback, and I was hoping, based on him being your start of the week, that we could cancel these out and that you as well would have gone with Jameis Winston. That is – scary for me but i i have Jameis winston 5500 with this new receiving core um as my i can't over. see <laughs> oh man this is this is good video so, um, so you went with Jameis winston how much is winston 55 oh 5500 <laughs> so you you saved 2000 uh, compared to me but i went with kyler in the matchup against right, the raiders can, can you hear me yep mike what do you got hold on let me get the people down there i got a i got Derek carr I think it says 6,200. I can't tell. All right. Well, you know what? That's enough from you. Uh, Derek Carr, 6,200 in the same matchup as Kyler. My starting running backs, and I think we're going to have we, – we could have some of the same guys here. I'm going with Christian McCaffrey at 8,900 against the Giants, and I'm going with Antonio Gibson at 6,200 against the Detroit Lions. Those are great options. I had Christian McCaffrey – uh, yesterday I updated my lineup. I went more wide receiver heavy. I have neither of those guys. I am going with Saquon Barkley. He skyrocketed up you to 7,300. 7, <laughs> yes, uh, my champion from last week, but he's still he's still underpriced there. And uh, Darnell Anderson, okay. a.k.a. Daryl Henderson, 5,700. I guess I know where you're spending your money. Um, who's your main running backs there? Well, I'm, I'm, backing, I'm backing that thing up because I'm calling in the dump truck, baby. I got Leonard Fournette at some price. Yeah, I'm stuck at truck, truck, truck. Guys like what, what, what. Uh, maybe 6,700. I'm not sure. And then I got my name is Jeff Wilson in there for uh, a budget play at the running back position. I don't know what he costs, though. That does make sense, Mike. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. You look really dumb. Mike is struggling. <laughs> it's unpleasant in here, fellas. My wide receivers, pretty happy here. I went with Hollywood Brown, the stack with uh, Kyla Murray. At 6,200, went with Tyreek Hill at 7,100, taking on the Baltimore Ravens. And then I am going back to the well with the rookie. I had originally wanted to go Kadarius Toney at 4,200, but the injury caused me to pivot. And so I am going to go with Jahan Dotson Ooh, this week and okay. see if he can get back into the end zone. 
I like it a lot. My wide receivers are where I spent up. I am going with Devontae Adams, who should have 700,000 yards against the Arizona Cardinals and 12 yep. touchdowns. Yep. Uh, and Jamar Chase, an unstoppable mm -hmm. force usually against Dallas. He was 8,000. And I'm I'm going with Michael Thomas in my with a stack uh, with Jameis Winston. So if Michael Thomas is back, that's going to be really important for my roster. Yeah, that's a big uh, three players that could catch a lot of passes. Uh, I have Derek Carr, so that means I have Devontae Adams, who like uh -oh. his, his over under right now is ninety three and a half. That's so that's his baseline, and his odds of scoring a touchdown right now are minus one eighty. So they're expecting big things for him. I have uh, uh, the sun god, Amon Ross St. Brown, who I expect to catch a lot of passes. And I have the opposite of Jahan Dotson. I have Curtis Samuel. So that will be a fun uh, I don't, science experiment. I don't like how many receptions both of you have, like uh, total, like the PPR yeah, kind of value. PPR, baby. Because uh, Hollywood and Tyreek are much more big play. I mean, Tyreek should have both, but uh, that makes me a little nervous. And then to finish out my lineup, Mike, I also have Jeff Wilson. He's in my flex. I went with bargains to afford my high-end quarterbacks and running backs and, and those top two wideouts. At tight end and defense, I went with Kylan Granson. I have oh, him as nice. well. At 2,600 against Jacksonville. And then I went with the Bengals defense. Yeah. 2200 against I Dallas. Have the I assume that anyone that is making any lineup <laughs> on DraftKings ever this week will have the Bengals. Um 2200, I have no they were the second cheapest defense. I don't understand how they're a good defense and then they're playing against a backup quarterback with a beat up offensive line. Who's your flex? Uh, my flex is Zay Jones at 4,300, another guy that I'm hoping to get the PPR uh, out of. He was pretty involved uh, last week. Uh, I have the Bengals at the tight end. I'm getting loose, baby. Ooh. So I will be playing Pat Fryermuth, and then my flex play, I have the opposite of you, Jason. I have the number one. I have Christian Kirk. Very nice. How sweaty are you? I do not want to answer that question. <laughs> There okay. Is, there is an ecosystem growing things immediately in here. All right. Well, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Dra download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, I'm tempted to kind of prolong the show. Mm, yeah, let's talk a, a little bit more. I thought once the segment was done, I could uh, bail out. Yeah, no, but well, the segment's not quite done because <laughs> I want to talk about uh, Daryl Henderson. <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook's uh, over-under line was 14.5 carries, 83.5 yards. Why is this music playing? I've got a lot to talk about here, Mike. <laughs> All right, Foot Clan, enjoy the weekend. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.